we will continue our discussion on equilibrium but in this chapter we are going to learn acid base equilibrium we are familiar with acids and bases in daily life for example people use antacid to neutralize the extra acid or to get relief from the acidity in stomach because we are eating in daily life lot of acidic food anything that tastes in sour we call it as acid and anything it's bitter and slippery in touch we call it as base so when they combine it will neutralize correct so how can we identify an acid from its formula how can i, I how can we identify from its properties so scientists came up with a different definitions of acids and bases we will have three definitions for acids and bases by three different scientists first one is by arrhenius so arrhenius definition is an acid is a, any substance that can donate a proton or it produces hydrogen ion when dissolved in water and bases are substances that donate a hydroxide ion or produces hydroxide ions when dissolved in water and now one more thing according to arrhenius definition acids are proton donors what are protons why h plus ion is called proton so we know hydrogen atom has one electron and one proton and no neutron so suppose this is the nucleus of hydrogen and we have a proton there right and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in the first shell so when it lose that electron it changes to h plus ion correct and h plus ion now has only one proton so we call that h plus ion as proton that's why the definition shows it's a proton donor as we know most of the reactions are taking place in aqueous media we have to talk about what happens when acid dissolves in water so in terms of arrhenius theory or the definition we can see that suppose this is a beaker with a water i am not showing the structure of water here just to make it simple so i am adding hydrochloric acid that is hcl into this beaker of water and what happens is this is a covalent compound but still acid will dissociate into ions h plus ion and cl minus ions so these cl uh, this h plus ions can be acidic by donating this hydrogen ion to a base that can accept this hydrogen ion that means if you have a base here in a beaker of water so when you put a base say for example sodium hydroxide so since this is also a strong base according to arrhenius theory it will produce hydroxide ion and sodium ion and we can put that one here and what happens when you combine this acid and base that hydrogen ion from hcl combine with a hydroxide ion from base to form h2o and we can have the other salt nacl so the dissociation of acid we can write in aqueous media so that is in water aq i will have hydrogen ion in this aqueous media and i will have chloride ions this is how i will write the dissociation of acid in water how can i write the dissociation of base naoh for example in aqueous media i will have sodium ion and hydroxide ion so this is how we are going to write the dissociation for acid and base in aqueous media since we are talking about the reactions in aqueous media and we we have seen that hydrogen ion is produced in the aqueous media so that hydrogen ion will not stay like that it will combine with the water and it will form h3o plus and we call that one as hydronium ion and we use hydrogen ion and hydronium ion interchangeably in our equations so they are acting as same in both cases if you write h plus or h3o plus the function is same and now according to the second definition that is bronsted lowry definition acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptor what does that means let us see an example here we can take an example of 
HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, in aqueous media means we have to add water to it, which is liquid state. We will have this acid will donate its proton to water. So we will have H3O plus, that is our hydronium ion, AQ plus, we will have the anion from the acid. Okay, so here we can see that this is acid. This water molecule is acting as a base to accept that proton. So that is the definition according to bronsted lowry concept. And now let us take a base, which is NH3, which is a base in aqueous media plus water in liquid form. And we can take the hydrogen ion from water to ammonia. So that means water will act as an acid and the proton acceptor is the base. So we will have the product NH4 plus AQ plus we will have OH negative ion AQ. So now we can see that water is acting in the first equation as base and in the second equation it is an acid. That means water can act both as an acid and a base. We call that type of substance as amphoteric substances. So that means substances that can act as an acid or a, as a base. So some other examples, we just said, uh, talked about water. Other examples are NH3 and HSO4 negative ion. So anything that can both accept and donate a proton, we can say it is amphoteric. So when we combine two water molecules, one water molecule will act as an acid and the other water molecule will act as a base. And we are going to get H3O plus by accept, this water molecule can accept one hydrogen ion from the acid and it can form H3O plus plus the remaining OH minus from this acid will be here OH minus. And now if you reverse, you can see that this hydroxide ion can accept the hydrogen ion from H3O plus and it can give us H2O and H2O. That means on both sides we have acid and base now. But to recognize what we will say here is this is the base so the base is accepting the hydrogen ion and so we call that base uh, from the base after adding hydrogen ion we are calling that one as conjugate acid and from the acid after removing that hydrogen ion we call that one as conjugate base now let us see some examples to practice for HCl, how can we write the conjugate base? By removing that hydrogen ion. So we will have the anion Cl minus that is going to be a conjugate base. What about HNO3? We can remove that hydrogen ion and we will have NO3 minus ion as a conjugate base. And ammonia, it can act both as an acid and a base. So in this case, it is acting as an acid. So how can we get the conjugate base? Is by removing one hydrogen, which is going to be NH2 minus and hc2h3o2 that hydrogen is attached to oxygen is the one which is going to remove this hydrogen will get removed when you draw the lewis dot you can see that this hydrogen is attached to one of the oxygen from here so that hydrogen will get removed and we will get c2h3o2 minus as the conjugate base and now ch3 nh3 plus it will remove one hydrogen which is attached to nitrogen and we will have CH3 NH2. We don't have negative sign because this is the positive sign along with the hydrogen getting removed. So these are the conjugate bases for these acids. And now the reverse. How can we write the conjugate acid from the following species? So let's see that F minus. How can we write the conjugate acid is? We just have to add H plus ion to it. So we will have HF and NH3, we can add H plus ion to it, we will have NH4 plus and to H2O, we can add H plus ion and we will have our conjugate acid H3O plus.
So conjugate basis, everything that remains of the acid molecule after a proton is lost and conjugate acid is base plus a proton. So from the equation, the general equation, we can write HA for the acid. So HA stands for general acid. A can be any anion, negatively charged ion. And uh, base here we are taking H2O. And we are getting H3O plus because this acid is donating its proton to water. So we will get H3O plus plus the anion left from the acid we will write that one that means it is the conjugate base that is everything that remains of the acid after a proton is lost and this is our conjugate acid that is the base plus a proton so we call this one as acid the conjugate acid base pair and another conjugate acid base pair is this one so these two one pair and this is another pair Let's try one example here. H2SO4 plus H2O liquid gives HSO4 minus AQ plus H3O plus AQ. So let us find the conjugate acid base for, pair for the first one. So we see that H2SO4 lost one proton and we are getting HSO4 minus. So if it is losing one proton, we can call that one as an acid and the other molecule will act as a base so that means here water is acting as a base and this is our acid so from the acid after losing one proton we are getting conjugate base and by adding proton to h2o we are getting conjugate acid so the acid base pair will be acid to the base and acid and this one. And in the next example, we can see that this is a negatively charged ion accepting a proton from water. That means proton donor is H2O. So this is acting as an acid and this molecule is acting, ion is acting as a base. And then we can say that since it is accepting that hydrogen ion, this is our conjugate acid. And this is our conjugate base. So our pair is going to be conjugate acid base pair, conjugate acid base pair. One more thing related to the conjugate acid base pair is that when we have a strong acid on the left side, that means if the acid is strong, we will have a weak conjugate base. Weak conjugate base. And vice versa. If you have a weak acid, we will have a strong conjugate base. Also, we should know that there are different types of acids in terms of its strength. So, for example, we will have strong acid and we can have weak acid as well. So, what is that means is for strong acid, there will be 100% dissociation or I can say 100% ionization. That means it will change to ions. Say, for example, if you are taking HCl, we will have 100% of H plus ion and Cl minus ion for all the molecules we are taking. And uh, same way, weak acid means it will not uh, dissociate 100%. So that means if you are taking HCl, you will have 100% ionization like this, whereas in the case of HF, we will not have 100% ionization, less than 100% ionization. That means it is not going to make hydrogen ions like this. Maybe if you are taking five or ten of them, maybe one or two will ionize. Okay. So what happens? The if when you write the equilibrium constant for this one, concentration of hydrogen ion, concentration of chloride ion divided by HCl, we will have uh, a very high K value for the strong one, and the K value will be very 
low for the week. That means in this case, what we will have concentration of F minus and concentration of H plus, the product will be very less, whereas the concentration of reactants will be high. So the K value will be lower. So that means if the K value is lower, the equilibrium will shift towards left. So based on that, let us explain this particle diagram for the dissociation of weak and strong acid. So for strong acid, what happens is there will be 100% ionization. So for example, you can see here hydrochloric acid. It is a strong acid and it is going to ionize as hydrogen ion and chloride ion 100%. So if you are taking five molecules of HCl, you can see that one, two, three, four, five H plus ion, and you can see that one, two, three, four, five chloride ions. So that is 100% ionized. Whereas if you are taking an example of a weak acid like HF, you can see that it is actually ionizing only one molecule. So you can see that H plus here and F minus here only one of them separated, whereas the other one, one, two, three, four, are still as molecule. So it's not complete ionization and or no 100% ionization, not 100% ionized. So that is weak acid and this one is strong acid. So that's the difference between strong and weak acid. The six common strong acids are sulfuric acid, H2SO4, hydrochloric acid, HCl, nitric acid, HNO3, perchloric acid, HClO4, hydroiodic acid, HI, and hydrobromic acid, HBr. And strong bases are the first group and second group hydroxides, specifically lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. So what does that mean? If you put lithium hydroxide in water, it will dissociate completely to lithium ion and hydroxide ion. And if you put sodium hydroxide in water, it will dissociate completely to sodium ion and hydroxide ions. Beryllium and magnesium hydroxides are not strong bases. They are weak bases because of the smaller size.